This is the Soviet Union heavy tank with the concept of the deep battle doctrinal use for the Red Army. The Russian engineers slapped different kinds of guns, from the divisional artillery gun to the anti-aircraft gun. Yes, that's right, they did re-engineered an anti-aircraft gun, making it one of the most powerful gun in early World War II. During the early stages of the conflict, notably during the first year of the German invasion of the Soviet Union, the KV tanks were noted for their substantial armor protection. Even a single KV-1 or KV-2 supported by infantry might halt German forces in some situations. These heavy tanks became a nightmare for the German war machine during the Battle of Barbarossa. Well, enough said now, let's get straight to the content. Clement Voroshilov or KV tanks are a line of Soviet heavy tanks named after Soviet defense commissar and politician Clement Voroshilov. During World War II, it collaborated with the Red Army. During the early stages of the conflict, notably during the first year of the German invasion of the Soviet Union, the KV tanks were famed for their substantial armor protection. The KV-1 heavy tank architect Joseph Koten was born on February 26, 1908, into a working-class family in Pavlograd, Dnipropetrovsk region, which is now called Ukraine. He was a Soviet armored vehicle design engineer who served as the head of all three Leningrad armor. He is most known for his work on the Klimat Voroshil of tanks. He has received a number of Soviet Union state awards for exceptional design development of military and civilian technology. Even a single KV-1 or KV-2, supported by infantry, might halt German forces in some situations. The German Wehrmacht rarely used tanks against KV at the period since their own weaponry was unable to deal with the Russischer Koloss or Russian Colossus. The KV-1s in production from 1939 to 1941 was the first initial manufacturing variant with 141 units being built. Later with the upgraded variants, 1,370 units were built. They were armed with a 76mm L11 tank gun that may be identified by a recuperator above the barrel. Earlier tanks didn't have a hull machine gun, and others had a cast turret. With the addition of a 76.2mm L11 tank gun and a DT hull machine gun, they were later enhanced. The unusual pig snout mantlet distinguishes this gun. The exposed turret ring on this variant resulted in a wide rear turret overhang and a higher profile. During the Winter War, these tanks were prone to frequent malfunctions, but they were very resistant to anti-tank weapons. This heavy tank had a length of 6.75 meter, a width of 3.32 meter, and a height of 2.49 meter that would be reasonably small if not for the massive tracks. The weight of the KV model was 45 tons. The large mudguards above the track provided plenty of storage space. The KV wheel train included front idler wheels and rear drive sprockets, as well as a set of six twin road wheel bogies, each with its own torsion bar system. Due to the weight of the tracks, there were also three massive and thick return rollers. On soft ground, snow and muck, their big tracks offered exceptional traction. The tank was operated by a crew of five. On the hull, there was the driver and radio operator who operated the hull mounted 7.62mm machine gun and in case the driver was wounded or knocked out, the radio operator could also serve as a driver. The driver was in the center and the machine gunner was on the left, with the other three crew members in and below the turret. Due to their thin vision holes, they had poor visibility. The driver's frontal slit was composed of low-quality laminated glass that was frequently clouded, and his viewing periscope had restricted traverse. The commander, who also served as the loader, was equipped with two turret periscopes. The KV-1 weighing 4 to 5 tons, was powered by a model V2, V12 diesel engine that produced 600 horsepower, thereby bearing a power-to-weight ratio of 13 horsepower per ton. The fuel capacity on this tank provided an operational range of 200 to 240 kilometers and a maximum speed of 25 km per hour. The KV-1 armor could withstand numerous gunning whilst holding its own, due to its thick front armor of 90 mm, a side armor of 75 mm, and a rear armor of 70 mm, which proved impenetrable and challenging to opposing force. Due to production delays, the earlier variants KV-1 were fitted with a medium-velocity L11 with a short barrel of the same caliber, and an unmistakable recuperator above the barrel. It has been claimed that the L-11 was based on the 76mm divisional field gun or the air defense gun. Yes, that's right, they slapped an artillery gun or anti-aircraft 
gun onto the tank. It possessed a 30.5 caliber barrel, a semi-automatic vertical sliding wedge breech, fixed quick-fire 76.2 by 385 mm R ammunition, and a hydro-pneumatic recoil system. It has maximum firing range of 5.6 km or 3.5 miles, with a rate of fire of 6 to 7 rounds per minute. It has been claimed that the Russian engineers also redesigned the field artillery ZIS-3 onto the KV-1 tank. A field gun based on the L-11 was introduced between 1941 and 1942. It consisted of an L-11 barrel mounted on the ZIS-3's split trail carriage. The 76.2 mm F-32 was chosen as the main armament at first initial stage of production, but due to unavailability, adopted the L-11 anti-tank gun. The Russians had slapped the redesigned 76.2 mm anti-aircraft gun onto the KV-1 tank, making it one of the deadliest and most powerful anti-tank guns in the early part of World War II. The gun was based on the 3K model 1939 76mm AA gun and was noticeably longer than the Zy S5 that ended up on the KV in late 1941. This anti-aircraft gun has a range of 9.3 km or 5.7 miles. It has a rate of fire of up to 10 to 20 rounds per minute. The secondary armament consisted of a coaxial DT 7.62mm machine gun, one in a rear turret ball mount, one in a whole ball mount. The DP-27 or DT-7.62mm is a light machine gun developed in the 1920 for the Soviet Red Army under the direction of Vasily Digoryov. It could endure being buried in soil, mud, or sand and continue to function normally. It was also nicknamed the record player because of the round magazine. In the events of series of battles, they faced little opposition from forces mostly consisting of Pak-36 and 38 at t weapons and Panzer-35 light tanks. In one battle, a single KV-1 effectively blocked some of the 6 Panzer Division's assault for 24 hours the next day, before they ran out of ammunition. Hundreds of different calibers were fired at it, but it managed to stand its ground for a long time before sustaining severe damage. On August 14, 1941, during a battle in Krasnogvardysk, Gachina, close to Leningrad, a group of 5 KV-1s that were effectively camouflaged and entrenched, two in reserve, with twice as much ammunition as normal, were deftly arranged around a solitary road that ran along the edge of a swamp. During a single half-hour operation, this unit led by Lt. Zinovy Kolobinov destroyed 43 German tanks from the German 8th Panzer Division. Later, the Order of Lenin was bestowed upon Kolobinov, and he was declared a hero of the Soviet Union. The legacy of this tank was its resilience and immense sturdiness to withstand firepower and attacks, which helped in destroying numerous opposing armies. However, they suffered technically in terms of frequent malfunctions due to rushed conception, which paved way for next generation of Soviet heavy tanks with new turrets and heavier guns. Watch out for this space the T-34 tank as well as the Panzer IV tanked. Till then see you in our next video.